O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them, with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, 
Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she, he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And before we begin, I'll give this to you as a bonus. No extra charge for this. Uh, actually, I think you, most of you already know this. But uh, do you know what um, Alleluia you know, means? Uh, Alleluia is, is, a, is a praise uh, word. So praise, and Yah stands for Yahweh, so it really means praise Yahweh, or praise God. And uh, I cannot seem to get enough Alleluia's for some reason today. So once again, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Woo! <laughs> Isn't it great? I'm, I'm seeing Jerry trying to follow me with the camera. For a moment, I, I had that little temptation to run back and forth and see, <laughs> see, see if he could follow me. Um, our gospel reading for this morning uh, is John 20, uh, verses 1 through 18. Uh, St. John described the reaction of Mary Magdalene when she arrived at the empty tomb uh, on Easter morning and when she assumed that Jesus' lifeless body had been taken by someone and laid somewhere else. So she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple uh, who Jesus had a special love for. Uh, and she explained to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And then she returned to the tomb, and she stood outside her Lord's burial site, weeping and wondering what had happened to her Lord's body. And then she stooped down to look inside the tomb and she saw two angels and she said to them the same thing she had said to Simon Peter and, and John. Uh, they've taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. So Mary Magdalene's reaction at seeing the empty tomb was not the Lord is risen. It was more like the Lord is missing. Thankfully, this is not how the story ended. Thankfully, Mary came to recognize her risen Lord after two things happened. After the assurances given to her by the angels, the appearance of angels. And secondly, after the personal appearance of Jesus himself, when he spoke to her um, about angels. The Greek word for an angel simply means a messenger. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And according to Matthew's account, this messenger uh, this angel came directly down from heaven with an appearance like lightning when he rolled the stone away. So according to Matthew, the messenger was a supernatural being. 
On the other hand, Mark's account uh, identified the messenger as a young man robed in white. The Greek word for this messenger does not suggest any sort of supernatural being. The Greek word, ninaston, for this messenger simply means a young person, a, uh, a youth, uh, or a youth in some parts of, the <laughs> parts of the country. A regular guy was there at the tomb when Mary stooped, no, when Mary looked in. Yeah, that was in, in Mark's gospel. It was not a supernatural being, but a regular guy, the word meaning someone in their teens or maybe twenties. This wonderful ambiguity um, means not only that regular guys and gals can be angels, but also means that angels can sometimes appear as regular guys and gals. You may remember in Hebrews it says, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by uh, doing so, some have shown hospitality to, to angels without realizing that they were angels. So I'm going, going to give you an example of, uh, of hospitality, simply offering a drink of water to someone in need. Karen, I need a drink of water. Seriously, I need a drink of water. <laughs> but I worked that in nicely, huh? Thank you. So, um, as I was saying, Regular guys and gals can be angels, and uh, angels can appear as regular guys and gals. What truly makes an angel an angel is his or her message. According to the Gospel of Matthew, the message of the angel was, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. And according to Mark, the angel's message was about the same. He is risen. He's not here. And um, in Luke's gospel, again, the message is essentially the same. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Again, what makes an angel an angel is the message. An angel can be a regular guy or gal, a mom or dad, a grandma, a grandpa, a friend, a neighbor, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, even a little boy or a little girl. An angel is anyone who God uses to deliver his good news. This is my lead into a story that I tell every year, but in asking the previous congregation, nobody remembers it from last year, so all, all, all even better, right? But the story is about a little boy in Sunday school whose mind was uh, something of a mystery to his teacher and his classmates. Uh, a little boy who just didn't catch on to things the same way that typical uh, eight-year-olds catch on. Uh, he often raised his hands to answer a question, and his answers were weird. They were just processed differently. One Easter morning at Sunday school, each child was sent out with an empty plastic egg to find something in nature that reminded them of Easter. One child returned with a butterfly in his plastic egg. The butterfly did not fare too well, by the way. <laughs> Another child returned with a dogwood tree bloom, blossom. And another child returned with a picture that she had colored of the flowered cross. 
Well, when it came time for this special little angel, Timmy, to open his plastic egg, all waited and rolled their eyes a bit and shook their heads, wondering what Timmy would come up with in his egg. Well, after struggling a bit to pull the plastic you know, sides apart, he finally opened his egg and there was nothing inside. So his Sunday school teacher said, Timmy, maybe you need some extra time. Why don't you see what you can find next Sunday or between now and then? And Timmy said, no, can't you see? Jesus rose from the dead and my egg is empty just like Jesus' tomb was empty on Easter morning. You saw that coming, didn't you? Okay. It's still a good story. To review, uh, on that first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene was not yet a believer in the risen Christ. Uh, when she first found the tomb empty, her exclamation was, not he is risen, but rather he is missing. But then she came to recognize her risen Lord after two things happened. An appearance by angels, messengers, and a personal word, a personal appearance of the Lord himself. The personal word of the Lord came uh, from one she thought to be a gardener. But then he spoke her name. And it was how he had already spoken her name. And I'm sure with a twinkle in his eyes, his love that he had for his followers, his 12 and others who, who, who followed him and his teaching, he spoke her name as just as she had heard it before from Jesus. And when he said Mary, by the way, in the text, Mary is with an exclamation point. And her reply, Rabboni, was also with an exclamation point. It's like uh, somebody you didn't expect to see, risen from the dead, and you see your, your friend again. Uh, one day we will have that experience, I trust. But they had it early while she was still walking this earth, and he was too, uh, from the dead. And they were so excited to see one another. Like Mary Magdalene, who didn't get the fact that the gospel was before her, that Jesus was risen from the dead, didn't get it at first. Some of us at times don't get it. We have our doubts sometimes. Luke adds that Mary Magdalene was, um, was delivered of seven demons. So we are also like Mary in that we have our, not only our doubts, but our demons, right? Like Mary Magdalene, we've had times when it felt like not the Lord is risen, but it, it, it felt like the Lord is missing. <coughs> Maybe you remember that man in Mark 9 who confessed to Jesus, I do believe, but please help me with my unbelief. That's us. Jesus, as you know, said elsewhere in Scripture that that's okay. A mustard seed of faith is enough, along with whatever doubts you may have. So, such is His grace. Like Mary Magdalene, thankfully, we have all had angels in our lives, right? And uh, maybe a little, little boy or a little girl grandchild. It may be, you may remember when your grandma or, or somebody, a stranger, was an angel to you. And we have met those who turned out to be Jesus himself, just like that gardener. 
because of these angels and because of our personal encounters <coughs> with the risen Christ when he has spoken our names when he has spoken to our needs we can all exclaim especially today the Lord is risen before his death Jesus promised his disciples that after dying and being raised that he would be back on a regular basis to make personal appearances in our lives and with faith his followers would see him he promised he said I will not leave you like orphans I am coming to you the world will no longer see me but you will see me he was speaking of the Holy Spirit who helps us to see the invisible Christ visible with the eyes of our hearts opened. Well, I love the way this was worded in a favorite old hymn uh, as to how we witness Jesus when he makes a personal appearance in some fashion. I know some of us know this. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look. Open your eyes. He'll show it to you. Have you ever stood in the family with the Lord there in your midst and seen the face, the face of Christ on each other? Then I say, you've seen Jesus, our Lord. The Lord is risen. He reigns from heaven. He resides in our hearts. And you can see him right here. And in the world as you live. Amen. Standing, we now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page two in your bulletin. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with his liberty. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our worship now continues with the prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who are just freedom and peace. For the 
the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who are in the the friends, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are in the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Ruth, our diocesan bishop, Jeff, our priest, Karen, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Sandra, Seth, Dan, Nanita, Jonathan, Sarah, Inez, Greg, Charles Ramsey, Dee, Candace, Alexis, Dorothy, Charles Wisely, Logan, Allison, Mildred, Jerry, Suzanne, Natalie, Ed, and Michael. Jim, that Hear us, Lord. Lord, your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who could live your thoughts in me. And Father God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to, to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peaceful Stephen. Peaceful Stephen. Uh, I've invited uh, very special people. Not everybody could be uh, could do this, but very <laughs> special people, and not like that little boy. Uh, I've asked to uh, to do the announcements on behalf of our congregation. <laughs> um, if you haven't read your emails or gotten one, our picnic at Camp Christopher's is now out back at St. Joseph's next weekend. And, and if anybody's available this Thursday, we're packing for Backpack Buddies at 11 o'clock. Feel free to come by and give us a hand. You know, I think that's it. Is there anything else? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let's walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. And during our offertory, um, as we prepare the altar, that would be a good time for the children and the moms and dads to come up and uh, take some of the flowers from the bucket and place them into the, um, into the cross. Now there's a pair of scissors I see. I think that's for moms and dads. Maybe it shouldn't be placed 
uh, so close to the floor for little ones. So I'm going to place it right up here. And um, so come with the children and help them to place the flowers. Thank you.
Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given to you.
countenance upon you and look upon you with his love for you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our concluding song is Alleluia, sing to Jesus.